Let's say you decided to breed your ball python. So you went out and got your snake a mate and spent money for this whole new enclosure and raised up that new snake and you paired them together. They had babies and those babies come out of the egg and they're just brown. Just brown, not even a pattern, just sad and brown because you didn't pick the right genetics to pair your ball python with. It's an unlikely scenario, but let's talk about how to figure out what to pair your ball python with. My scenario in the cold open was made up. I don't think I've ever seen just a plain brown ball python, although I'm sure you could do it. You'd have to really be trying though. Uh, this video is going to talk about how to figure out what you want to pair your ball python with. It's going to accompany another video that I did that talked about buying strategies with ball pythons. But in this one, I'm going to take one specific pairing of mine and we're going to get a little bit into genetics on this and talk about how you can figure out what to pair your snake with. Welcome to the green room, by the way. I'm Bob Bledsoe. Behind the camera, as always, is my brother Kent, who uh, has a pretty strong phobia of snakes. Hi, let's cut to Kent's corner. Oh, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead and roll it. Hi, welcome to the corner, Kent's corner. I'm here to talk to you about breeding snakes, and I'm gonna talk about percentages, so try to stay with me. Let's say you have zero snakes. You've got a pretty low percentage chance of ever being eaten by a man-eating snake. Let's call it 20% on average. Now, if you own a snake, that chance goes up to about 80%. 80% chance of being murdered by a man-eating snake. Then if you decide to breed it and you buy a mate for that snake, you've just doubled your chance. That's 112% chance of being killed by a man-eating snake. And if they have babies, I don't know how many babies a snake has. Let's say minimum 58. That's a 709% chance of being killed by a man-eating snake. And I just don't know what you guys are doing. I don't know why you would even wanna. Well done, Kent. You combine nonsense facts in both science and math. Thanks. I'm doing this video to accompany that other uh, buying strategy video because I've been getting a lot of messages through Instagram and on my email through uh, YouTube of people just getting into breeding and they're just trying to wrap their heads around genetics and understanding sort of how to make a breeding plan. So what I'm gonna do in this video, like I said, is I'm gonna take one pairing and that pairing is Damara. She's just a pinstripe girl. We're gonna keep it simple, just pinstripe. Uh, we'll talk about, we'll talk about pinstripe, but uh, nice visual genetic with nothing else confusing things in the mix. We're gonna confuse things with the male. And the inspector, who you may have already met, the inspector complicates things a little bit because he has a bunch of potential genes in play. He's definitely banana, inchy, orange dream. He's probably super inchy, but we don't know for sure. He's possibly super orange dream. He's possibly fire, and he's possibly pastel. So there's a lot of really cool things that we can find out in breeding him, especially in breeding him to, to a simpler genetic female like Damara, who just has pinstripe in the mix. So let's put him back and go to the board and we'll talk about these genetics a little bit. We're not gonna get too in depth on genetics, but I wanna do the board because I want it to be understandable. So when I was trying to consider what to pair the inspector with, that that's who I, who I had first is the inspector with all of his potential crazy genes. The plan was, Pair him with something that would look cool, number one, but also for that particular snake, I want to find out what he's got in him. And uh, so pairing him with something with a whole bunch of other genes would make that a lot more challenging. And I am pairing him with Freya, who has a bunch of genes too, but since I'm pairing him with, with Damara, who's just a pinstripe, I think we'll be able to see what genes he does and doesn't have. So let's take a look at this. Mama right here, Damara, is a pinstripe. 
I realize that those of you who have been into ball pythons for a long time or already breed ball pythons, this might be a little bit elementary, but there are, I've got a lot of different viewers, um, especially brand new people. So I want to catch up the brand new people to just the basics of how this works. Uh, we're, what we're doing is we're calling these uh, little, little uh, pieces of paint, painter's tape, painter's tape, uh, the chromosome. So this is, this is the father's chromosome, the mother's chromosome, and the baby's chromosome. On those, we have different spots for genes to land. And these spots I've marked with yellow uh, chalk. You can have two copies, potentially, of each gene. A lot of times you just have one. So what we're gonna say is if you see an, if you see a yellow line in a spot where a gene could potentially be, we're gonna say that that's the normal gene. Now, I wanna make this clear. There is no normal gene. There's not a gene for a normal ball python. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos, but I but uh, it's, it's it's a pet peeve that, that I see people think that there's just like one gene that makes it normal. A normal is a combination of probably thousands and thousands of genes that make a ball python look sort of like it looks in the wild. And that's why they look so different from one another is because they have a ton of genes that make them look like that. The, these genes that we've named are just genes that we've named. They're ones that, that alter the color or pattern so much that it's desirable and we've identified it and given it a name. So that's all that is. A normal ball python is just a ball python with a bajillion genes and they don't have one of the genes that we happen to have identified and named and said this is a, this is a gene that we want that's valuable to, to us as, as uh, breeders or, or pet keepers. Um, so anyway, we're, the, the way to think of this though, and to make it simple, after I've explained all that, to make it simple is we are gonna think of it as its own gene, like a normal gene. The point is that it just doesn't have the genes that would normally sit on these uh, on these alleles, on these little parts of the chromosome. So anyway, let's keep it simple. Mama is just a pinstripe. She just has a single gene pinstripe. That's it. The inspector is a banana. One copy of that gene. We know he's Enchi and we know he's Orange Dream. This is what we're sure of. We are sure that he only has one copy of banana. We know that he's not a super banana. He might have two copies of Enchi, he might have Orange Dream, and he might have a couple others, but let's just, let's just take this for example. In figuring out what to pair a snake with, one thing that you, that you can do, and this is the big tip right here, you guys, uh, and we'll go into this here in a second, but go on Morph Market. Look at, first of all, uh, look at my video, I'll link it. It's, uh, it's, it's my tips and tricks video has one of the tips and tricks is basically how to use Morph Market, how to plug in certain genetics and look for what those snakes look like. So what you do, go to that thing, because I'm not going to cut to this and get onto a Morph Market page because I've already done that. But basically, uh, in this in the section where you're filtering everything, you let's say, let's say that I want to see what a banana pinstripe looks like. I'm going to filter, I'm going to put banana and pinstripe in, and then automatically it's going to say that, that it's going to show snakes with up to nine different genetic traits. Drop that all the way down to two because you only want to see banana and pinstripe. And then under for sale, make sure that you click on all. That'll show you snakes that are also sold. Now, banana pinstripe is pretty common. You're going to see some for sale, I'm sure. But for other genetic combos that are less common, you might want to just look at the entire history of Morph, Morph Market and see what has sold already uh, that has those genetics so you can see what that looks like. Um, and the idea here is, when you go on to a Facebook group uh, and, and post, hey, what should I pair my, um, you know, I've got this orange dream and what should I pair it with? About half the comments are going to be pair it with whatever you like, uh, which sounds like a, a, a cop out. This is like when you ask a waiter at the restaurant what's good and they go, it depends on what you like. Yeah, it depends on what you like. But that's also true. It's a It's a true thing. There's so many genes in ball pythons. There are certain things that, that look really cool, you know, like a dream sickle ball python and, and things like that, you know, combos that, that are really cool. And, and, uh, the bell complex, the blue eyed leucistics that you should know about and stuff like that. But in general, figure out what your favorite 
genetic morphs are and then go on morph market and see what those combos look like. So that's what I would do here. I would look and see what a banana pinstripe looks like because let's say that, let's say mom gives a pinstripe gene to the baby. She, she doesn't have to, she could just give her normal and then that baby wouldn't be a pinstripe. But let's just say that it's a pinstripe and dad only gives banana. We're not gonna get into the male and female banana situation because I already did a video on that. So I'm not gonna even talk about that. So we got a, we've got just a pinstripe banana and that looks like this. Let's add Inchy to it. And uh, now let's go, pin, now let's take away banana and go pinstripe orange dream Inchy and see what that looks like. Now let's take away pinstripe and just go orange dream inchy. And now how about banana? Oops, put pinstripe back on mom. Cause that's where that is. Now banana orange dream inchy. So all these different combinations, I'm not gonna go through every single combination, but now here's another thing to do in the case, a lot of you have snakes that you don't know exactly what the genetics are. And so now let's look at everything that the inspector could possibly be. By the way, I believe here's this is this is my guess on what he is. I think he's going to prove out super inchy fire. Um, it's pretty hard to tell though. He could also be pastel, though I don't think so, and he could be super orange dream. That's really hard to see right now. Um, but any of these combos, you know, like what if what if mom throws a pinstripe, and all dad does is throw a fire. Let's see what that looks like. So if I get a snake that's got fire, I'll know that, that, you know, he proved out fire or pastel. Let's look at what a pastel pinstripe looks like. So in this scenario, the other cool thing is with the supers, the inchies in, in the orange dream, he has to throw those. So you actually, in, in this situation, you couldn't just have a pinstripe uh, pastel or a pinstripe fire because he, I've, I've now put all my cards on the table and I've, and I've made him a super orange dream and a super inchy. He has to throw something from every one of these alleles. So mom is throwing, throwing normals from all of these alleles and potentially a pinstripe. Dad can throw either one of these, but then he has to throw an orange dream. He has to throw an inchy. Let's put it on this side. I guess it doesn't matter. He has to throw an inchy. And then he can choose to throw a fire, choose to throw a pastel. I mean, he doesn't choose it, but you know. Um, fate, fate chooses it. Uh, so anyway, I don't know how many combos there are. Maybe future Bob will put it on the screen of how many potential combinations there are with this pairing, but that's what you do. You, you find the morphs that you like, look them up on morph market, see what they look like and, and, and then do your research. You know, like if you've got a spider and you're like, oh man, I love the spider gene. I want double spider. If you pair a spider with a spider, that's a lethal combination. Don't just be like, oh, I think I've got this genetics in my snake. Let me just randomly breed them. Do your research and find out about that gene. Make sure that there's no problems breeding that particular gene with others. And most of the, most of the genes are totally fine bred with everything else. Almost all of them are. The spider complex genes are typically the ones that, that have the problems. Do your research on those. Figure out what you like. Pair your snakes up. If Damara goes this year, she will lay in July, I believe. That's uh, when she laid last time for, for the last breeder that had her. Uh, so if she goes this year, she'll lay in July and she'll probably have a bunch of eggs. I'm guessing upwards of 10 or 12 or something. I think last time she had, I think she laid like 13 eggs. 12 were good or something. Thir 13 and 12, 11 or 12 were good. So she's a big girl, she'll lay a lot of eggs and pinstripe is very easy to identify. We know exactly what a pinstripe looks like and it doesn't really muddle, it, it doesn't muddy the waters uh, of the other genes as much. So it's almost like breeding her with a normal. She's gonna throw some normals. We're gonna have some normal babies with just the inspector's genetics and we'll have some pinstripe babies with just the inspector's genetics. So we'll be able to find out what's, what's in him. So again, this was a pretty simplistic genetics video, but I know that there's a lot of brand new people out there that are just trying to wrap their head around how to do this pairing thing. So uh, message me if you have any questions, feel free to ask, you know, I'll answer when I can and, uh, or, or comment down below, whatever. I think we'll do the sign off right here. Kent, you've been really focused on Kent's Corner lately, but don't forget you are the marketing department of Green Room Pythons 
And since we have a sticker here, maybe you could market the only things we have available right now, which are stickers. We have sticker packs. Hi, I'm Kent from the marketing department. In sticker packs, uh, we have, they look like this. You can get four of them. And if you send us a donation of whatever you want, at least five dollars, uh, to the channel with your address, we'll send you a pack of stickers. I don't know why you'd want to stick pictures of snakes on anything, though, but... Marketing. Good marketing, Kent. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Um, push the button, and uh, if you made it this far, you might as well hit subscribe also to the channel. And you're subscribed, and you can see all the Kent's corner. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.